five seconds. Is it starting? Yes? Okay. It just refreshed. Hi, everybody. Tony here from Sundance. And we are with, of course, Sam Heaton. And we're going to talk tonight. We have a crew with us here tonight in the inside. And we're uh, excited to be here. And we're going to talk about Cobia tonight. And um, just before we start, I want to just let everybody know we got the Palm Beach Boat Show this month, so uh, come out and see us. Sundance is going to be there. We're going to have uh, a good selection of boats, Everglades, um, Parker, Regal, Barletta boats, uh, our pontoon boats, rather. And um, we, we're going to be uh, we're going to have some boats available to buy. So come on out and see us. We've got a good selection of used boats here at the store in Jensen Beach, also. Palm Beach is my favorite boat show. I, I've always liked it better than any of the rest of them. You gonna come right down there on the water. Yep, right off Flagler. Yeah. You going to come see us? Well, um, I, it's this weekend? No, it's two weeks. It's two weeks. Yeah, 20, I, might 20, come, I, I think I can. My schedule's been terrible. Uh, you know, now you that bird fishing? season. Huh? You been fishing? I've been out there all day today. I feel like a wrung out dish rag. <laughs> but, it's, uh, but it's freshwater fishing. Everybody wants to catch a 10 pound bass right now. Everybody. <laughs> I got an uh, 11 3 two weeks ago. That's, no, that's a, a week hog. ago. A week ago. Yeah, it was a big fish. But, uh, they, you know, the big fish are moving up there right now. The only problem is we're, I'm in the headwaters. And the only problem is they're spawned out. You know, uh, a month ago, you know, you could have added a lot of weight to one of them. But uh, it's, uh, man, there's people covered that thing up like, and Florida says there's no money in fishing. Holy moly, man. We got people from Indiana, Missouri, Ohio, <laughs> Kentucky, Tennessee. I mean, you go through the parking lot and it looks like a, a used car sale, you know? And uh, I just can't believe they don't think there's any money in fishing because that's where all the money is in South Florida. No, oh, I, I I just went and spent thirty bucks and I didn't even fish today. <laughs> <laughs> I went down the street and got a couple things to, to show what kind of lures we use for COVID. Yeah. I know how you feel being tired. I just I got off a plane last night. I was traveling all day yesterday. So how far? How long, you went to California to see your cousin? San Francisco. And San Francisco. Did you go down to the docks or anything? I was at the wharf. He lives in he lives in North Beach. If you know San Francisco, that's the yeah. Italian section, of course. You know, sure. That's where he is, but uh, it's nice down there. I, we went to the wine. We went down to the winery. I yeah. went down to the to, to the farmers market down yeah. by the water. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it was a good weekend. I was fishing on the in San Francisco. I I used to work for Safari Land, and that's there in Coronado, and we go up to to San Francisco. I was fishing on charter boat one day and. And uh, we were catching some fish. We were catching them in the kelp. And uh, I had this nice yellowtail on. I mean, it was, you know, it was a nice one, man. And one of them sea lions came up out of the water. That thing must have jumped six or eight feet high. And I mean, he took that yellowfin. I mean, yellow, yeah, yellowfin. He ate it one go. I'm telling you, them things, you talk about sharks scaring you. Sharks don't scare me. That thing scared the crap out of me. I've seen them, and I've surfed when I lived out there. We used to see them sometimes surfing, and they, they're, they're really smart. They're like dogs, you know. They yeah. come up to you, and they're curious. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, I, I helped uh, Safari Land develop the body armor that the Navy SEALs wore under their wetsuits. And it was pretty interesting. You know, it, uh, Safari Land made body armor you know they stopped short of shooting me but it was they, it, they didn't test it, it, it very interesting the final test on the product yeah you no know, the, the way they enter mesh that weave to stop that projectile very i mean you know, it's really scientific stuff i was just somebody that you know was supposed to have a heat stroke that was me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but no it's time to cobia fish man and, yeah, uh, we're in the spring, right? We yep. typically start seeing them around now. It's, uh, you're going to see them on the wrecks. You're going to see them on the uh, high spots. And 
A couple of things I like to do. First of all, when I'm Kobe fishing and I pull up on a place and I'm drifting over it, I never cut my motor off. Cobia love the sound of an outboard motor. That will bring them up. For me, it brings them up better than anything you can do. It, it leave that motor out. It's interesting that you say that. I've had been out there many times, and the cobia are not afraid. They swim right up to the oh, boat. Oh, swim right Especially up to the Especially if you have a chomap out, block up or you know, sure. messing around. They just swim sure. right to the boat. Yeah. You know? And, uh, you know, if you can get one up behind the boat, you know, and pitch a live bait to him or pitch a, a jig like you have here, or, uh, show them that jig, Tony. So we got a. That's a. Yeah. That's a, a Gulf Stream. That's a good one. Uh, I like chartreuse, but it's got that's the, why I don't get them. And with the with the curly tail worm, yeah. basically, and um, this is this will work for you if you can't find live bait or if you know the fish are around and you want to have one rigged up ready to throw. Like he says, a lot of times your live baits are out, and all of a sudden the fish swims up to the boat. Yes, sir. And uh, you want to have something to throw at them. I also like the swim baits. It's any any type of larger mm -hmm. swim bait. And uh, they'll they'll you know they'll come right up on it. You want to keep it away from them, play a little tag, and then let them eat it. Yeah, the more evasive—that's a big word for me. The more evasive you are with the bait, the better they're gonna they're gonna really get after it. They're really predators. The only thing about cobia fishing in the spring of the year is the sharks. They are bad. On you know they're they're migrating. And I see people sitting on the sand pile, for instance. I see people sitting on the sand pile and they continually hooking fish and they'll catch uh, maybe a jack or something like that. But if they ever get a Kobe on, you can count on it. They gotta not only catch the fish, they gotta beat that bull shark back to the boat with it. Cause they will, and they just keep sitting there and catching them and feeding those sharks over and over and over again. And all you're doing is wasting the cobia and training the sharks. If you don't think a fish can be trained, uh, you're, you're dead wrong, man. You can train a fish. They caught, in World War II, they caught bottlenose dolphin right here in Stewart. The, up there where uh, River Palms is, that used to be a uh, marine uh, research foundation, and part of their deal was the bottlenose dolphin. And they trained those dolphin to go and stick land, I mean, uh, magnetic uh, bombs underneath hulls of ships. To, those, those and, are and mammals. That, huh? That's not a fish, that's a mammal. Well, you know, I see. He lives in the water. He's a fish. <laughs> but you're right. Well, you're, He's a mountain. Well, I have, you're right, though. I mean, I, yeah. live, I have a pond in my backyard, and I feed the, the bluegills and the bass, and yeah. they, they know. I'd walk up to the pond, edge of the pond with no food, and they swim right up. to. They know when I'm there. Yes, sir. They know when you're there. So they can you recognize it. you, too. Behavior, so yeah. fish can be easily trained, and you're just training those sharks to eat those cobia. And, you know... I'm jealous because I like to eat them too. <laughs> well, one of the things, if you know, like a lot of guys nowadays, they're using their trolling motor instead of an anchor. You know, a lot of guys are trolling and they're sitting over a spot. Um, one thing you want to do is just like an anchor, you want to, you know, a lot of these guys will, will put a buoy on their anchor line, like if they fish for tarpon or something, they'll let that anchor go so they can chase that fish. It's the same thing. Don't sit in one spot trying to get that fish to come to the boat. Get it away from wherever the structure was that you were fishing. Drift with it, and that'll hopefully the sharks won't. And if they follow you, then the guy behind you that's still back at the reef is going to catch one and get one in. But you know, you know what I mean. So you got to kind of play it that way. Get away from the structure where you hook the fish, and maybe you've got a better shot at, at getting that fish. Because the more that cobia fights, the more it's going to attract those sharks. But uh, you know, let, we, let's not talk about sharks so much as it. As we do the cobia, the cobia is a ferocious fighter, and I see a lot of people. Another thing I see a lot of people do, they get a cobia about that long, right beside the boat, they gaff it. 
okay? They'd stick the gaff in him, get him on the boat, measure him. He's too short. What are you going to do then? you got to make the decision on keeping him and maybe losing your boat or throw him back and wasting him. Get a big net. I'd a lot rather than that. Your, your chances of, I mean, you got to be a pretty good fisherman to gaff a fighting fish. And it, I mean, you're not, you, I mean, it's a pretty tough deal. They got these gaffs about this long, you know, and they're trying to gaff the fish and they miss him. I like a six to eight foot gaff. You say, well, I don't have any place in my boat to store it. You got to find a place. Because you're going if you're gonna land a lot more fish with a longer gaff than you are a short gaff. Because you ain't you it, like I say, it's gonna be how long they gotta be? I know you're looking it up. Thirty three. Thirty three at the fork. Thirty three at the fork. That means the fork of the tail. One per person, six per boat. Yep. Accurate. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, fork length thirty three, one per person, six per boat. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. The season is open on them. I don't believe there's a closed season on them, so yeah. you know, but we get them here. And you know what? Uh, it's it's a that a thirty three inch fish is a big fish. You know, um, if you get one bigger than that, consider yourself lucky, and you know you're gonna have a lot of good eating. It's it's good stuff. Yes, sir. The live bait and reel. Yes, sir. Live bait is probably the best way, in my opinion. Yeah. If you're on, if you're if you're in an area where they're swimming mm -hmm. around, a lot of times, as Sam says, we're not gonna talk about sharks, but a lot of times they're swimming with the sharks. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. The closer they are to the shark, the less chance they are of getting eaten. And they'll get right on top of them bull sharks or get right right on their back. Also, if you see, um, I don't know if any of you have been out, uh, have you ever seen the big manta rays? They yeah. come there, a lot of times they're swimming with those guys out there. Any, you know, stingrays, those big manta rays are cool, but they, you know, they, yeah. they swim right up the shadow of them, you know. It's really, really cool stuff. Well, there's not much else out there to swim around with. <laughs> yeah. what, what kind of live bait do you use? I like greenies. Yeah, greenies are my favorite. Uh, a Sardines. big pogey, a big big pogey. You know, I'm not afraid to throw a big bait at, at one. And if you're gonna throw a big bait, you gotta use a big hook. I had a, we had a, we lost a huge fish today, and I felt like it was kind of my fault because I didn't have a big enough hook. But I was using a number six. Gamagatsu octopus hook. That's a pretty good size hook. Mm -hmm. Just didn't didn't get it. No. Yeah, but. I use uh, this is a kind of an odd setup, but you know that's a I use a circle hook. This is a, a knocker rig, but I'll typically use a fish finder rig. Um, you know, with a six or you know eight foot leader and a, a live bait, and they'll eat. They're, they're when they're hungry, you know. When they, if they, if, let's say, if you're if got a chum block out or something, they they swim up to the boat. They'll probably eat a chunk of bait. You know, they they they're not going to be picky. You know, but they do like live bait. You drift the live bait out then? Yeah, or or I'll put it deeper. I don't like it on the surface. I'll run mm -hmm. it down a little bit. I'll use a half, you know, a half or. or I put two corners. flat lines out and two down baits. And then just drift. Yeah, and just drift. Now I like them. One down bait's got a two-ounce sinker on it, which is not very deep. The other one's got like a four or six. I want to split that water column up. I if found I catching bait. I always, once I start getting a, like half a dozen to a dozen uh, greenies in my live well, I'll take a rod, put one on, and toss it back out and find a cobia that way also. Yeah, they, they're bait. always around I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> I have people, you, you got 30 boats on the sand pile, and somebody's got a flat line out the back. <laughs> I'm usually on the outskirts. I'm on the outskirts. Hey, buddy, you got my line. Okay, let me get it. Let me get off of it. Don't run over my line. Okay. But they are swimming around those bait schools, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. But usually what I would do, and I would fish the outer edges. I'd get outside of the bait, of the boats, and... Because they're they're there, they're, they're definitely in there. Especially even at even at bull shark, you know, you'll, you'll see them this time of year. They're not out. They're not way out on the 70, 80 foot reefs. They're out there, but they they come in shallow. So yes, they do. Got to watch out for the divers too. Believe it or not, they dive and shoot them. A lot of those guys are free diving. Though you typically you got to be right next to their boat. That's the diver's job to 
I mean, unless he's got a liability out, he needs to watch out for me. <laughs> they pull pretty good. It's hard to get them to jump, though. <laughs> they dive a lot. <laughs> they pull pretty good, but it's hard to get them to jump. <laughs> Has everybody caught a cobia here? Everybody hooked one and caught one? No? Yeah. Everybody eating one? Delicious oh. food. Delicious food. Not fun to, to fillet. Yeah, that, that's what you can talk about. Round. When you bring them in, you got to be careful. Oh, yeah. When you bring them in the boat, sometimes if they're green, they have those spikes on the back of their their dorsal that will really get you. Live box. <laughs> yeah. Put them in there and they can beat that live box up. But, buddy, they will rake you with that top fin, that dorsal. Woo! Bad. Bad. But, uh, you know, if there's a lot of... I can't emphasize enough how many places, uh, how many wrecks and, and high spots and all, there is to catch these fish, you know, catch these cobia. And you, you just drift across. The way I do it, I just drift across the top of them, you know. I just drift across the top of them. If I get a bite, and I don't know how many of you, uh, do, do y'all, there's a lot of people running side imaging, you know, where it shoots out the side of your boat. Boy, the cobia really, a, a, a cobia really show up well on those things. They really show up well. And the trick to reading that thing, for me, is if there's not a shadow on that on that screen, if there's a, like an object here and a shadow here, let me make sure I say it right. If there's an object here and a shadow on on behind it, that fish. That could be a a, it, a a a suspended fish will not have a shadow. Is that a better way to say it? Does that make sense? He will not. It will be an object on your screen. It will be a mark on your screen without a shadow behind. It. If it's attached to the bottom, it's going to have a shadow behind it. Huh. The way I used to explain side imaging is if I took a flashlight and shined it on Big Red there. <laughs> it would show him, but he would have a shadow behind him. But now Big Red jumped up in the air about six or eight feet, and I shined the flashlight on him. There wouldn't be any shadow underneath him. Oh. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a beam of a flashlight. It's a projectile. What's the critical name for that, Haley? The classic name for that, the... Hey, listen, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm worried about getting the yoga class. <laughs> Do what? What'd you say? I said I'd like to see Big Red jump. Uh, well, we can still jump a little bit. Yeah, yeah about that. <laughs> I can jump over a bottle cap. Yeah, <laughs> That used to be a saying in Vietnam. I'm so short. When you get start getting ready time to go home, I'm so short I can sit on a bottle cap and swing my feet. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't get them guys to go to the field for anything. Man. <laughs> but anyway, and, you know, another thing, uh, I I really, I don't mind fishing monofilament at all for cobia because monofilament's got stretch in it. And when that cobia makes that surge, that, that monofilament's not bad at all. Because it's stretch, you know? And that that stretch will help you sometimes, especially if it's a big fish. That stretch will help you with that big fish. Now, all the other times I use braid, 40 pound braid. Do you run out, do you run specific charters for them, for Cobia? For Cobia? Yeah, I could, I could target Cobia. You know, if, he's, if, if the client understands that we may not catch a, a cobia, you know. But now if you want to get out there and, and do some flat lines and, and run some flat lines and stuff, you know, there's a chance of a kingfish or, or uh, something like that. Even a, well, we did. We we, uh, we got a cobia. Yeah. We, uh, we mm -hmm. were targeting a cobia and we got a kingfish too. And we, I think we hooked a sailfish there. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes, sir. 
Do butterfly uh, fish and hang them over the side to attract the shark? I don't. A lot of people do. They take bonita and butterfly them down and then hang them off the side of the boat to get the sharks to come up and feed on them. Yeah. I'm just, I, you know, I don't like sharks. <laughs> I don't like them. I think it should be a rule you could shoot one, but it's not. You can't do that. Don't go out and shoot one and say Sam said it was okay. <laughs> but, you know, it's, uh, I have taken the end of the gaff, not the hook part, and hit them on the end of the nose and try to drive them off a fish. I've done that. And I don't think well, that's it. You've got to be pretty close to the boat to do that. Well, yeah, you got to be right there. He's got a long gaff. Yeah. They don't like that. <laughs> no, when you hit them on that nose, they'll, they'll pretty much leave out. Yeah, especially the big bull sharks. Oh, them big bull sharks. I mean, you know, he got a he big around this table right here. I don't want him near my boat. <laughs> yeah, I don't want him near my boat at all. They're known to eat trolling motors. They'll hit a trolling motor. I'm gonna tell you, me and Mike Holliday were on the beach one year. And this has been. 10, 15 years ago. And he had a uh, maverick redfish, uh, uh, a huge redfish, and had a uh, new 150 show motor, Yamaha, on that thing. And they was, uh, we were we were Kobe fishing, and they was a uh, big hammerhead shark come up and grab that prop on that boat because of the uh, electrical current that it was putting out. Grab the prop on that, of course it wasn't, it wasn't in gear or anything. It grabbed the prop on that boat and shook that boat so hard. This was a 19 foot boat. It shook that boat so hard that I had to hold on to the polling platform to you know keep my balance. Of course, it might, fear might have been in, a little bit involved in there. <laughs> but you could feel him, I mean he was, he was a monster hammerhead, but and yes, they will hit a trolling motor. It's that because of that electrical current. Somehow, you know, it's, I don't know what you. Hey, do you know what you call that electrical current? Critical mm -hmm. harmonic uh, vibration value. Critical <laughs> harmonic <laughs> vibration. Value. Ellie, there you go. Take note of that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Only harmonic I. No, I play it going down the road. <laughs> Keep so away. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the uh, type of gear you're using, not not the tackle, but the, the yeah. actual the rod and reel and stuff. What do you typically use? I use I like thirty pound mono or forty pound braid with a sixty pound leader. It's a pretty I'm, standard setup. Right? Yeah, it's, I mean it's easy. I mean it's not elaborate stuff, and if if uh, I've got that 60 pound braid. I mean, it's, it's, I'm sorry, 60 pound leader. I don't know. I just, uh, you know, a fish has got all kind of sharp stuff on him. And, uh, you know, he can cut your line at any time. So and, I guess so. you can say, you know, you, if you're out there, if you're fishing, I mean, you can be fishing for just about anything. You can, you know, and just have one rod set up with a. You know, an artificial because you never know if that Kobe it might swim up to the boat. Yeah, because they do. They'll just swim right up to the boat. With, even if you don't have chum out, sometimes they just you're like, "What's that?" And you're like, "Oh my God, it's a Kobe!" And you're yeah, scrambling sir. trying to find something Can to throw at it. You use a barrel swivel when you put your leader to the to the braid. Do I don't do you because I I I tie a, what the, uh, uh, Mark Sosen used to call a no name knot. Yeah. But there's nothing in the world wrong with that. No, I didn't know if, if you want to keep the weight up on a on a fish finding rig, you got to have something yeah, that swivel. Yeah, like like I tied this with it's just a it's basically a uni to uni knot. Yeah, but, but it's it's mono it. it's it's mono to mono it's twenty pounds to forty. But, but I don't use uh, snap swivels. No, no, no snap no, swivels. Yeah, and use a smallest you swivel. You you know use yeah. a decent if you're going to use a swivel use a decent one. Um, mm. <laughs> I'm going to disagree a little bit. You don't want to use a smaller one? No, I want to use one big enough so he can't wind that 
swivel through the eye of the rod. I'm not taking customers out on my boat <laughs> yeah. using my rods, but I get what you're saying. They don't understand. When the swivel gets to the end of the rod, quit reeling, man. <laughs> well, you have the, yeah. either way. It, they're either going to run that thing right to the tip and break the, the ceramic on the yeah, tip, yeah. or they're going to run it into the, yeah. into the reel. So. Robbie asked me the other day, what in the world are you doing to the rods to break all the tips? I said, it's not me, dude. It's in people, people making our living. <laughs> Him and me both. But, no, I try to use one big. Or, to Tony's talking about what Tony's talking about. Or I use a plastic bead in front of the swivel. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's the right way to do it. A plastic bead yeah. and then the swivel. Yeah. That way, you know, you can't wind it through there. If And then, you know. And, you know. I try to use a five to six foot a liter. And, uh, you know, I don't like it when people reel the fish right up to the end of the rod because it makes it so hard to land them, you know. don't. don't uh, I try to tell them, well, how far should I reel it? The length of the rod. Leave the fish out there the length of the rod so that I can either grab the line and gaff him or put him in the boat or net him. But I really do like a net. I like a, net, a nice dip net. Now, if he's obviously, if he's big enough to keep four or five feet, I'm going to gaff him. <laughs> gaff him and net him. <laughs> <laughs> want to get him in. Shoot he's him. That Shoot him. Shoot him. Mm. But... You know, I've caught, I caught a two. I'm sorry, 65 pounder. Cobia. You know where, uh, you remember where that sea buoy used to be out there? What was it, 14 or 12? Yeah, uh, 12A. Was it 12A buoy? I believe it was 12. Me and Brent Bowman were out there one day and I caught a 65 and he caught a 42. Was it 14 or 12? I don't know. It was the, the other one's up by Fort Pierce, right? Yeah. yeah this, but that one's got, that's 12A up north, yeah. So 14, it was 14. It was 14, yeah. But, it, you know, that buoy was on a, there was a little bit of a... Yeah, it was on a high spot out yeah. there. Yeah. Sandbar, high spot, whatever you want It just washed away on. one day. I think a hurricane washed it away. Hurricane washed it away and it floated off. It, what it did, it picked the weight up off the bottom. When it got off the bottom... So as far as real size, you'd be okay using like a five thousand, or you know, would you want something bigger, bigger, six thousand, a little bit bigger? Yeah, I'd go on a minimum. I mean, I like a eight thousand. What I like to use, and you know, if I'm using a, a, a lever drag, you know, a a, a, a twenty five is big enough. You know, plenty big enough. If he gets if he gets all your line on that thing, somebody's not doing something. Somebody's asleep, sleeping to wheel, or drinking beer or something. <laughs> but uh, I like I, that's it. And I like I like a, a at least a six foot rod, at least a six foot rod. So if that fish goes under the boat, you can stick that rod out and keep the line off the bottom of the boat. People don't realize that if those little bit short rods, you know, if that fish runs under the boat <clears throat> and you can't, and, and he pulls you down, he's going to get that line against that boat. That's the reason I like a little bit longer, six and seven foot rods, to keep that fish where I can stick that rod out there and try to keep him from, if, there's, if he's got any angle at all, I can keep that line off the bottom of the boat. Yeah, or walk around the back to the... Yeah. I'm not near as agile as I used to be. <laughs> I try to just stand up and fight them now, running around the boat. I've seen, I've seen them go from around the gunnel, on the motor, up the up the starboard side, back to the port. You know, not me. No, somebody's gonna get hurt, namely me. But that's uh, and let's talk a little bit about eating cobia. One thing. I've noticed, to me, I really don't like to freeze cobia mm -hmm. because it's not a real oily fish anyway. And if you freeze it, it uh, it 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 
it, it's pretty dry when you cook it. I don't know if you cook it on the grill or if you broil it or fry it. Frying it's not so bad. If I had a cobia that's been in the freezer for a couple of weeks, I'd I'd finger it up and fry it. What I'd do, but if I got a fresh one, I like to grill them with a lot of of uh, Tony Sachere or Obey or something like that. Okay, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Any other questions back there? Yeah, pretty good crowd tonight, Sam. Mm-hmm. We had a big crowd last week. I mean, last month. We had everybody was filled up. So, anything else in a chum bag you can do to attract them or to try and find them? You use regular chum, just like a regular. Well, you know, if if I'm I, I like to chum, but what I do is I take my dead baits. And I'll chop them up and throw them over. And that way, you know, I don't know. I, I don't really like to. I don't mind fishing with a chum bag. I hate storing the damn thing after it gets wet. <laughs> Holy but Jesus, there's some stuff in there that it, kill you, man. Away. Kill a possum. <laughs> Eat that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I th- I th- I'll throw it away or and then you then you got to wash the bag out, you know. But I like to, I do. I'll, I'll save my dead baits and and chunk them up and throw them over the side, and that always helps. Yeah. Always helps. Yeah. But you got to be honoring your structure. I mean, they're not just like in the middle of the ocean. You're oh no! Just you shut be. the engine off, and they're going to swim up. No, they have. You got to be. They are suspicious. Yeah, I mean you're you're right. They're yeah. they're typically going to be around structure. I I've, I was catching uh, one time I was out just outside of um, Bathtub Beach, the little reef right there. Yeah. Just outside of there was 25, 30 feet of water, and we were catching. They were all smaller. They were you know it was hard to find a keeper, but they were it was they were mm-hmm. everywhere. It was like we were catching one after another, one after another. So when they're here, they're you know typically you're going to start catching them. The smaller ones, I guess, were inside in this case. But but you're right, they're going to be around. They're going to be around structure. That's why you see everybody out at the bull shark bar or the sand pile or on the six mile reef, and some of the wrecks out there. Um, but you know that's what you want to do. You want to just like we talked about last week. I mean, we were talking about you know going to these different spots because you're going to come upon them. They're, they're there. You just got to find them, you know, mm-hmm. use your chart and your machine and, you know, pull up all those, the, you know, we talked about Martin County with the, re- the reefs. I think they delayed sinking the, the ships for the uh, price, price uh, artificials, but, you know, those, all those numbers are going to, you know, Martin County's got a whole list of numbers. Just put them in your sh- machine and go and go, you know. I mean, the numbers from Fort Pierce Inlet to Jupiter Inlet. If you could, hundreds. I mean, yeah. there's hundreds of them. Hundreds of them. And let me, let me say this. <clears throat> A lot of people say, well, hell, I'm on my numbers, but there ain't no structure down there. Either the guy that put them numbers on that map maybe not was quite as accurate as you are. And a lot of that stuff was put out there by Lorraine. And Loran was an educated they wag. They were translated numbers. So you know, trans- everybody knows what an educated wag is, don't you? Yeah. Wild ass yeah. guess. <laughs> and so. <laughs> Some of it'll move, too. Yeah, and it moves. It moves, man. I mean, the concrete doesn't move, but, you know, some of the ships, you know, when they break up, they'll break up and move a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. Sir? Sir? Yeah, yeah, just keep, exactly. Just keep finding it. If, you, if, keep, you gotta look for it a little bit. Yeah, keep reference. Well, and don't be afraid to. You know, a lot of guys. You know, this this is how a lot of the, the captains are here when they're out trolling. And I notice it all the time when fishing with these guys uh, in the tournaments, and they're trolling. But the captain's watching the machine, and if he sees something in an area that he may not have seen before, he hits that mob and then goes back in and names it puts a date or whatever, you know, and, and keeps track of it, and then he'll go back there, you know, another time. There's all kinds of little ledges, you know, you never know what you'll see on the bottom. It could be just a little bump. 
Because the smaller lake. reefs have less sharks. You know, well, the they, big bull exactly. shark, the exactly. sand pile. I mean, those mm -hmm. big ones are loaded with sharks. But if you find smaller, your own little yeah, whatever, the, they're the not guys those fish, with sharks. You know, grouper hang out in little spots like that. You know, mm -hmm. it could be a, a relief yeah. no higher than this table in yeah. 80 feet of water. And it's just a little tiny spot, and there's a grouper or two sitting there. You know? Sea bass. Yeah. And people say, well, did they get on buoys? You know, I've never been real successful around the buoys, uh, the welcome buoy and, and the inlet buoy, you know, that marks the inlets in Fort Pierce and all that stuff, on catching cobia. One reason is they're kind of shallow. The other thing is that's where the barracudas hang out. The barracudas hang out. They love that chain. That barracuda loves that chain. Where a shark, he really doesn't relate to that chain, but a barracuda loves that chain, man. He loves that chain. Does that make sense? Maybe to a barracuda. I don't know. Maybe to a barracuda. <laughs> but have you ever noticed that? That barracudas will hang out around those buoys a lot? They, they lay in that shadow of that buoy. And then it, their, their sole purpose in life is to cut my shabiki rig off. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what else? Any, any other questions? We'll probably get ready to wind it up here. But any other questions before we close it out? So drifting is better than spotlight anchoring over a <clears throat> over structure? No. Not necessarily. I mean, you can drift it. Way. Depends on what's going on on that spot. If there's a lot of boats there, drifting might not be the best way to go. Right. But if everybody's drifted, then you don't want to sit there and sit in the middle of everybody if they're all drifting. So you kind of got to read the water, right? Yeah. If there's a whole lot of people out there, take it and throw a couple of flat lines out back there and we'll just let them drift around. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get rid of them. <coughs> I don't think he heard you. Nah, he's reading some kind of educational stuff. Some kind of big name. <clears throat> All right, so we this information... What, um, go ahead. Uh, one thing I want to caution everybody about this time of year is... That weather can change severely in a 12 hour period. And you gotta really, really be careful. I mean, that wind can kick up so quick. This morning, it was still as a mouse. This morning, and by one o'clock, it was blowing. It was blowing big time. And you got, I mean, you know, you gotta take some kind of accountability. Don't rely on Katie who used to work here to give you the forecast. <laughs> I mean, that weather can change so quick and it is so dangerous out there. And how many of you have all your safety, uh, have all your safety equipment uh, uh, present and accounted for on your boat? Yeah. I just bought an E-Burb. E-Perb? Yeah. E-what? E-Perb. E-Perb. Yeah. E burb, e -perb. I don't know. It gives them a signal so that they can find the body, I guess. Yeah. You know, my wife made me. She... E perb or PLD? Did you get a small one or a mounted one? Uh, I got uh, a, a small one. Oh, PLD. Personal yeah, the locator personal beacon. locator beacon. Yeah. yeah. Those are great to have. Yes, I, they everybody are. should have one of those. You know, that's, that's yes, something they that are. everybody should have on their boat. You know, the E. The bigger proper e perbs are for guys that are doing the crossing or maybe going, you know, beyond sight of land and stuff like that. But you know, they're good to have, but they're a lot more expensive. But those little personal ones are great, uh, yeah. and you can even get one. What's the one that has the? You can do text on it. That's the Garmin one. Um, there's, there's. You need to keep it on you, not on the boat, on you. Yeah, yeah, that one you should have on. Hey, you know, let, let me ask. If you're by yourself, definitely. The popo. What is the law, the real law, on inflatable life vest? It's not a life vest unless it's being worn. If it's an automated, automatic in, inflatable and yes. it's not the class four or whatever the one. If it's not a regular life jacket, if, yeah. but it's a self, either you have to pull it or you hit the water. If it's not on you, it is not considered a life jacket. Life it jacket. doesn't count. It doesn't count. You but they're great. I thought. They're great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're very comfortable and very got nice to wear, but, but that's what I thought. Yeah. Well, I just a, bought some life jackets last week, and 
I bought the class two with the reflectors and all. On. We'll keep an eye on. You know, we'll we'll do a sh we'll do a um, one of our seminars here. We'll have maybe um, FWC law enforcement in, and we'll talk about. Yeah. Tony's yeah. not coming that night. <laughs> All right, Sam, 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 Sam's not coming. Sam might call in sick that night, but we'll we'll have him in to talk about what you need. <laughs> he can look at me and find me. For All something. right. So we'll just go over the list of what what you have on the boat. Right? Oh, you can call him in if you want to. No, we won't call him in. I'm going to stay incognito. How about we just get the Coast Guard? Auxiliary. Get yeah, we'll get, we'll get an auxiliary. Yeah, auxiliary guy. He, those, can't, ride he, he can't ride a ticket. He doesn't carry He can't ride a ticket. He can't ride a salmon ticket. Now you got to wear they your uh, kill switch. That's if a good all idea. All times the boat is in motion except for with the trolling motor. Yeah. So Even there's some speed. new laws out that we we'll we'll, we'll set up a oh, show to do that. Too. Haley will make sure that email goes out. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. All right, so we'll fit, we're going to end it up here. Just um, one last thing about the boat show coming up in Palm Beach. Come out and see us. Um, we will all be there uh, with Sundance, and hopefully Sam will show up. And if you guys go to the show, you know, come by and see us. We're right. We're, we we have a great spot in the water. Um, what's the right, what's the dates? The actual date? dates. Dates are the twenty fourth of 20, March, Thursday, Thursday to Sunday. Thursday to Sunday, um, two weeks from this Thursday. So that's the twenty twenty fourth to the twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. Twenty fifth. Twenty sixth. Twenty seventh. And twenty seventh. Yep. Come on out and see us. And lock your truck. Don't you have a bus leaving from here? Take a staff. Um, Haley, you were going to If, that? uh, <clears throat> if, if we can, uh, if you'll sign a purchase agreement, <laughs> we'll be glad to take you down there. <laughs> All right, and come by the store anytime. We're in Jensen Beach. Come by and see me. Sometimes Sam's here, you know, but if you got any questions that we didn't cover tonight, feel free to reach out, and uh, we'd love to have you come by and say hello. Thanks for joining us. Have a great evening, everybody. Number six.